Hey friends, welcome to another vlog. Um, so today I'm mainly carving um, in my sweaty studio. We're having like our second heat wave in the UK and we're just not used to it. It kind of reminds me of doing pottery outside when we used to live in Singapore. <laughs> it's the same. Um, so, but yeah, I'm going to be doing some cottages and some boxes. So I'll just show you this is a cut, some carnage I left from the other day that I didn't clear up, but um, <laughs> I'm gonna be putting all of my scraps up onto those boxes to dry out. And then I'm going to be carving lots of cottages. Just get these off. So I have some wax melt cottages, some incense ones, tea light holders here. This is a, this, this is a custom house order. Um, and it's actually, um, I think some traditional houses in Nigeria, so um, she wants me to kind of make a, cot a house kind of inspired by that. And then I'm going to be hollowing out some boxes, um, and then maybe I'll make some tiles if I get round to it. I just have some clay here that I was drying out, but it was drying out too fast in this heat. I just put a wet towel over it so it doesn't dry up too much. And then I've got some bisque pieces up here that I've already done. Yeah, so um, that's mainly what I'm going to be doing today. So I think I'll probably prop you up and then I'll, I'll show you periodically what I've been making. Maybe I'll speed through some of the carving um, because it takes a while. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm going to do today. Okay, I'll set you up somewhere and then get started with the carving. It's just a little close-up of the cottage I was just carving. So this one's for tea lights. So you pop a little tea light in there and then hopefully you'll get some nice glows through the windows and doors. And this one has pushed shells in the clay. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. So yeah, I pressed some shells in. Yay, one done. Only a few more to go. Hey, so I've done a few cottages. So these are tea light ones and um, like matchstick cottages. So I'll show you. So I think you saw me carve these tea light ones. So yeah, you put a little tea light inside and then you have like a little, it kind of becomes like a little lantern. You can see the light through the windows. And then I also have some of these really small ones that we um, use for holding matches inside. And then we add a little um, striker pad underneath so you can light your match. So I've just left these guys to dry out in here. Um, so next I'm gonna be doing all of these. So some wax melt ones and some incense. Thank you. 
these are the wax melts and some of the incense cottages some of the ones with the plain um, sides I'm gonna um, paint with some underglaze so I have this one that I'm gonna be doing this guy I'm gonna do a I don't know what um, colors I'm gonna do either blue kind of I want to do something similar to this one or I might do yellow and pink so I thought I'd show you guys that so I think I'll pop you um, maybe I'll pop you actually. <laughs> I always like never find my tools and stuff because they're always like, oh, I'm buried. Bye. Um, yeah, I'll clean that up later. Hopefully you can see this. I'm gonna try to splat and then stroke. Let's see. Nope, didn't work. <laughs> uh, nope, didn't work. Okay, let's just style it out. be blocking the kind of changing the contrast that's a bit better sorry about that guys yeah pop in the middle yeah so that's how he's looking I'm just I usually add just a few more brush strokes just so that the color is a bit more opaque in areas but I like to have the contrast of um, yeah, thinner like kind of like um, less opaque color and then more um, a stronger color in like areas where these brush strokes sh should hopefully come through like that I think I'll just make sure the doorway is all covered in underglaze something like that then I'll go with the other colour I'll just make it more like painty technical word a technical term <laughs> um, so yeah, let's see how this melts. So I think I'll start here, finish off around the window. Yeah, I quite like using the two different brushes, so the effect is a bit different. I'm gonna go around this corner. Hopefully, I'm not completely covering everything. Like. Might do a little swirl here, yeah, like that. Like a little swirl, and then I think I'll just, yeah, like that, and join up here just so it goes across the window. I think would look cool, and then, yeah, something like that. I think it probably needs something here to mirror. Unless I do something on this side. Might just do a little brush. No, that's nice. Do you like my internal model? <laughs> Sorry, this is what goes through my brain. Um, and then let's start. Let's start from this guy and kind of join him up. Actually, it'll look cool if I just join him up there. Yeah, I like that. So I think I'll just make that a bit wider and just take it down in areas and then maybe I'll just do some yeah cool and then here yeah I'm gonna make him a join him up over here in the window I kind of want to miss this window out because the clay is pretty thin and I know that it might crack if I go over it it's happened to me before I'm so sad so yeah I'll just go underneath the window and this guy's okay so I think I'll just take him yeah under there and maybe I might take him over this way and then join him up then I did I might just leave that guy there I think he looks nice so I've kind of got an even application of like pink and yellow and I think I'll do the same I'll just add some areas which have um, kind of thicker strokes of the pink just so there's some variety and the application looks more like painterly ah, I like that 
Cool. Right, I'll leave him this one to dry. Yeah, so I'll leave him to dry out and then I'll show you um, me carving. So it, the underglaze is dried out now and I'm thinking of um, doing the scruffito of this pop, these poppies. We've got like loads of seed heads in the garden and um, I thought it'd be nice. They're super cute and I haven't done that before so I thought I'd, I'd try that out. So I've just finished carving it and um, yeah I quite like it, I'll see how it is when um, you know it's all fired and finished up, not sure, I never, I'm never sure until I see it out of the kiln but yeah maybe I'll just show you out here, yeah, yeah I think it looks cute, it's a little bit different for me so let's see, I like to do a little bit of an experiment every shop update I do, so yeah just gonna let it dry with the lid on it with the lid on just make sure the lid properly fits yeah perfect and I'm gonna let that dry I'm just letting him dry with his friends so that's them all there lined up yeah so next I'm doing some boxes so I first need to hollow them out which I hopefully will do today um, if I don't just like turn into a puddle in the studio <laughs> um, and then I will do the final carving in a couple of days so I'll show you that as well um, yeah, what time is it? It's like 20 past five, which I should really continue. I'm so hot. <laughs> I might need to have a little break, cool down, and come back. But yeah, uh, anyway, I'll show you me carving the boxes whenever I do. <laughs> okay, in a bit. So it's been a few days. I didn't manage to do those boxes the same day. So it's been the weekend and now I'm doing the boxes now. Um, so I've done one, I'll show you. So I've done the initial hollowing and I usually dry them with the lid on so that they kind of dry together. And I've got all these, I've got these more to do. So I think I'll show you me doing this one. Um, yeah, I'm gonna clean this guys, don't worry. <laughs> I'm just gonna carve these and then clean up. So I mark two centimeters down to know where to cut the lid off. So I just mark that on all of the sides so I have a guide to line up my wire which I just line up on the marks I made and then cut the top off. And then I just mark one side so I know the orientation of the lid. Then inside I mark a square in the middle which is 1.5 centimeters away from the edge so that I have a good amount of clay to be able to carve some texture on the surface and then I just mark that into a square with the ruler and just a little trick is to put the lid back on and just smack it down and you should be able to get an imprint of the yeah so this is just a faint imprint of the square, which just saves you time not to measure it all out again. And I just go over that with my ruler just so it's obvious when I'm carving it. Then I start by hollowing out the box in the middle and I use this kind of tool. It's like a angled um, square loop tool. And I find that quite easy to actually just cut into, to make the initial cut into the clay. And I just follow that guide that I just made all the way around. Then I hollow out the middle. And again, I go in for another layer with this tool. 
but you can't go down too deep because the angle you need to keep it at you'll start to cut too much into the walls then I just changed to one of these normal like square loop tools and start to dig out in strips so I just follow the uh, walls I've already made and just dig out these kind of little strips until I reach the bottom. I try to actually leave, um, I don't leave too much in the base because the base always, if you leave it too thick, it will definitely crack. So I just try to aim to be quite close to the um, bottom. Of course, when it dries, I'll also carve the bottom so it will become thinner again. And then I just, yeah, I just use the tool just to go around the edges and then bring it up the sides just to smooth over the sides so that there's not any like carving marks or overhangs it just makes the cleaning up process easier when I do it um, when, when I do the actual carving on the outside I want the inside to be nice and smooth Just show you inside. I don't know if you can see, but I just bring the tool up the wall so that that's quite smooth and it doesn't have to be too perfect because I'll sponge over it um, maybe in a couple of days when I do the carving on the outside. Um, but yeah, that's it. So that's the hollowing out of the box done. And then next, I'm going to come and do the lid. Just finishing up a few bits. So for the lid, I just follow that grid, taking strips of clay away um, kind of on the outside of the line. Like something like that, and that's going to leave a um, kind of a step that's going to form the gallery of the lid. Of course you don't need to do this, you can also add a sausage of clay if you don't want to carve out your gallery. I just find it, for me, is um, quicker this way. But of course just do what you are used to guys. There's m many ways to do pottery and to do the same kind of outcome. It's just whatever you find the easiest, most comfortable. Um, I show you what kind of I do, but that doesn't mean <laughs> that's the only way to do things. It's what I do, so you just do whatever is suitable for you and what you find the easiest. I always get lots of comments like, why do you do it like that? You can do it like this. It's like, yeah, of course you can do it multiple ways. This is what I do and this is what I'm showing you. Feel free to do it however you want. And then I just go and remove the clay from the inside. And I've just switched tools to that pointy one. Just means it's a little bit more easier to cut into the clay without disturbing the gallery you've just made. And then I just remove the clay from the middle. So that's just cut out the middle bit and what I do is just sponge over just to smooth off the edges. And then what I do is actually check how the lid fits onto the box we hollowed because you want this to be quite a nice fit at this stage otherwise it's a bit tricky to actually um, do it later on when the clay is dry um, you want to make sure that you kind of get it a nice fit at the beginning it'll make your life easier for the next step so I just find the mark on the lid that I made and just line it up to the mark on the box so I know the orientation and then I just like place it on so it's not like totally pushed down and I just kind of look through the edges just to make sure is that going to be a nice fit and then I'll push down I'm pretty sure that's good 
and then I'll just push down the edges so that there's a nice kind of um, meeting of the top and the box so that when we come to carve it, when you carve the um, clay away from the outside, you'll get good contact between the lid and the box. So yeah, then I just leave it to dry like that. What you want to do periodically when it's drying is just to be able to um, kind of, what I'll do is probably try to take the lid off just so that it's not completely stuck. And then there we go. So that comes off. So you want to just make sure that you can actually take the lid off so that it doesn't like dry together and get stuck, which is like really annoying. So yeah, just make sure when it's drying, just come and see if you can just make sure you're able to take the lid off. And that's it. One um, box hollowed. And I probably would leave this dry overnight or I've got computer work to do tomorrow. So I think I'll come back in a couple of days. I'll just check it every day, make sure it's not drying out too much. And I'll show you me carving it. So I'm going to go and charge the camera now so that um, next clip will probably be me carving the boxes and then, um, oh yeah, I'm also unloading the kiln. So I'll show you that because that's all the um, cottages that I carved before. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go and go back to the house and um, charge you. But I hope everyone's having a fantastic day, guys. Some pottery fun to be had. Um, the garden's looking a bit dry <laughs> we haven't had like any rainfall here for like i don't know I swear like a year but my dahlias are kind of coming up which i'm very happy i they was these all started with tubers and this guy is beautiful so like intensely dark and then there's another bud coming um yeah but otherwise the garden is looking a bit ravaged <laughs> we also have this problem with um we also have quite a big population of monk jacks which are like little deers and they just come and like eat everything they're like mm, yeah I love that I love that so um, we need to actually like fence the house next year so we don't get that problem the Harry Potter was really upset that they ate all of his corn because <laughs> he loves corn but um, yeah these dahlias as well are looking so cute I just love the color of these guys and you get loads of flowers it's just in a pot so I love how that's looking. And then this is like a yellow one. <laughs> yeah, so I think Dahlia's my new, th my favorite flower. I'm gonna make sure I get loads of bulbs for next year. Or tubers, mm, I don't know what they're called. Anyway, in a bit guys. So um, I'm going to carve those boxes I hollowed. I'll just set you up. I've actually um, done most of them. Why is my battery gonna run out? I thought I charged it. <laughs> anyway, okay, so hopefully it doesn't, um, you know, run out. But yeah, so these are the boxes all carved, but I'll show you um, me carving the last one. So I've already just sponged off the inside and in the lid just to smooth over any carving marks. Um, and now I'm going to carve the outside. So I use these kind of tools, the ones like DIY tools, I find work the best. And then I just carve away some clay and some like interesting patterns on the outside. Um, I always check, every time I make a cut, I try to remember to check how much clay is left in the wall just so that I don't go through the wall. So, sorry, I'm carving a bit of an awkward angle just to show you, but I think I'll show you just like one side of this guy and then the lid. Oh, that one's a bit deep. Sometimes it's a bit scary. <laughs> it was okay. So um, I think my battery cut out when I was carving those boxes and um, it's a few days later. I've put on all that bisque um, Sorry, the greenware for a bisque firing and I've just unloaded the kiln now. So these are the boxes after firing um, for their first firing. So this is when we fire them to, um, I guess you call them bisque ware. And it just means that they um, a, are really porous and can take up glaze. And then I glaze them and then um, put them in for a glaze firing. So yeah, that's what they look like. I'm gonna glaze them, I think, few colors some of this quite nice like dark blue color and then a green um, and then maybe I'll do this orange here um, and then I've got some cottages as well that 
I'm gonna glaze so this is like a lace cottage and then I have like a little seaside tea light kind of cottage so yeah and I have some pre-orders so some plates and some dishes and some mugs to do as well so going into the next shop update I put all of my kind of pots all the way up there so I can see them um, so I'm quite happy with some of my Kurenuki stuff that's come out some cups Shay. I think the glaze came out really nicely. And then some mugs. I really like this mug. It's kind of like gone all swirly green in the middle. And then it's green and yellow on the outside. And then I also did this guy, it's a bit bigger. I think the blue's gone really nice, like dark in areas and I've mixed it with the white. So it's more like interesting kind of looking mugs, I guess, not your classic mugs like my kind of normal ones but someone that I quite like these more interesting shapes and then some vases up there so yeah I'm going to um, get on and glaze these um, it's the weekend now it's a bank holiday weekend in the UK so I want to get all these pieces done and then we can kind of relax a bit um, so yeah, I hope everyone's having a great day and I will hopefully be back next with a tutorial for the next video. I'm not sure yet what that's going to be, but if you want to see something specific from me, just let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, I'll leave everything that I've mentioned linked as well. Um, so yeah, happy pottering. Bye!